The Bride of Corinth by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, translated by John Anster, read for LibriVox.org by phone. To Corinth a young stranger came from Athens, though himself unknown, relying on his father's name, nor hospitable ties alone secured him a Corinthian friend, for, plighted by his father's vows, he longed to see his plighted spouse, and hence his journey's aim and end. But will the stranger welcome be, or must her love be dearly bought? Alas, a heathen still is he, and they the Christian faith are taught. And when new forms of faith arise, how soon love's tender blossom dies, without a sigh, without a thought. The house in midnight silence lies, father and daughters all at rest. Sleep only shuns the mother's eyes, she rises to receive the guest. She leads him to a chamber bright, and wine and bread before him led. She bows and wishes him good night. He thought not of the wine and bread, he only felt a wish for rest. At once he flung him on the bed, his weary limbs scarce feel repose, when hush, the chamber doors unclose, and in there steals a timid guest. He wakes, and by the lamp's faint light, behold a maiden tall and fair. Her veil is white, her robes are white, black as the band that twines her hair. Tis black, but streaked with lines of gold. She screams and shudders to behold the stranger youth reclining there, and, lifting her white arm in the air, exclaims, Then am I nothing here? Guests come and go, and none tells me. Dark is my chamber, lone and drear, and here to come is infamy. To wander here is scathe and shame. Sleep on, young stranger, quietly, and I will vanish as I came. Stay, cries the youth, stay, maiden dear, as lightly from the couch brings he. Ceres and Bacchus, lo, are here, and love, sweet maid, hath come with thee. Ah, thou art pale with idle fear, the gods are good, and blessed are we. Away, young man, stand far away, what pleasure is, I feel not now. Joy hath for ever fled from me, scared by a mother's gloomy vow. She feared to die, my youthful bloom, my hopes of love, her stern decree hath destined to a living tomb. Our ancient gods no longer deign in this dull mansion to reside, but one in heaven whom we in vain would seek to see, and one who died are worshipped with sad rites severe. No offering falls of lamb or steer, but human victims suffer here. He ponders with a trembling heart each word that falls upon his ear. And art thou then, ah, sure thou art my plighted spouse that meets me here. Be mine, my love, our father's vow, hath blessed our loves, be mine even now. Have they not told thee then, she cried, that I thy consort may not be? My sister is thy destined bride, but in her arms, ah, think of me, who in my cell will think of thee, who pine and die with love of thee, the cold earth soon my woes will hide. No, never, by this lamp I swear, that glowing emblem's heightens torch, thou shalt not perish thus from me. Oh, we will seek my father's porch, and from this home of sorrow flee. Be mine, my love, be mine to-night, to-morrow's sun will guide our flight. She reached to him a chain of gold, of deathless love a token fair. He reached to her a silver cup, adorned with gravings rich and rare. The cup, my love, I may not take, but give me, for thine own dear sake, one only ringlet of thy hair. Damp strikes the hour that spirits know, her eyes with eager pleasure shine, her cheek assumes a sparkling glow, her pale lips quaff the blood-red wine. But vainly may the youth entreat, the wheaten bread she will not eat. She reached the wine-cup to his hand, like her with eager joy he drinks. He speaks to her with words of love, on love, on love alone he thinks. No words have charms her breast to move, in tears upon the bed he sings. 
She leans above him o'er the couch. Thy pangs I mourn, but cannot heal. What, ha, my limbs have met thy touch, And tell thee what I would conceal. White, white as snow, cold, cold as sleet, Is she whose love thou dost entreat. He strains her in his closing arm, With strength that youth and passion gave. Cold as thou art, thy blood shall warm, Even if thy dwelling were the grave. With frenzied clasp of wild desire, He strains her to his breast of fire. Strange was, I ween, that bridal scene, For with their kisses mingled tears. But what is coldness, what are fears, While in her lover's bosom pressed, The blood that stirs in his veins warms hers, But, oh, no heart throbs in her breast. Without the door the mother stood, That under voice what may it be, She knows not. And she lingers there, she listens long and anxiously. Oh, is it that she hears aright, Voices like lovers, low and light? Breathless she stands, and motionless, Till of these low words satisfied, The vows of lisping tenderness, The words of lover and of bride. Hark, the cock crows, they soon will shine, Tomorrow night again, my love, Tomorrow night thou wilt be mine. The mother hears no more, in wrath she bursts into the stranger's room. And is there in my house a maid thus shameless, who can thus presume a passing stranger's love to woo? Thus thinks she angrily, when, lo, by the lamp's decaying glow, her own, her daughter meets her view. In the first impulse of his fear he strove to hide the maiden's face. In vain he drew the curtain's fold, in vain he strove her veil to place. Still from his reaching hand she rose, Tall and more tall her stature grows. O oh, mother, mother, hollow sounds, Unearthly formed each fearful word. Thou enviest me this bridal night, These few short moments of delight. To pain am I again restored, And is it not enough that I For thee in funeral pall should lie, For thee in youth should fade and die? Me, from my narrow silent bed, Hither a wondrous doom had driven. Your priest their ritual song have said, But, oh, it hath no weight in heaven. Your chants and charms from woman's heart, Its fervor, oh, can they remove? The grave is cold, but chills not love. I was his doomed and destined bride In days while Venus's fane still stood. But ye your former vows belied, and sealed your late-learned creed in blood. Alas, no heavenly power stood by, when thou didst doom thy child to die. And hither from the grave I roam, to seek the joys the night in life. Hither to seek my spouse I come, to drain his veins, a vampire wife. He dies, nor his alone the doom, for I must go, thus, to and fro. Night after night I leave my tomb. Tis over, lovely youth, the pain is on thee, that must end in death. Round thee still hangs my fatal chain, the ringlet I must bear beneath. I gaze upon it, blanched and grey, at day rise will thy brown locks be. But in our own heaven far away, bloom love and joy, O oh, come with me. Here, mother, hear a last request, build high for us a funeral pile. Oh, from that narrow cell released, my spirit shall rejoicing smile. And when the embers fall away, and when the funeral flames arise, we'll journey to a home of rest, our ancient gods, our ancient skies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.